I V M. Hi, I'm Satyajit. Hi, I'm Rajita. Welcome to Paperback by the Open Library Project. We have as our guest today Madhuri Advani, storyteller with a YouTube channel Kahaniyo Ka Adda, and producer at IVM Podcasts. In the first half of the episode, we discussed feminist fables by Suniti Nam Joshi. In the second half, we also discuss What I Know for Sure by Oprah Winfrey, The Delightful by A. G. Gardner, and Palestine by Joe Sacco. Madhuri is a dynamic storyteller and she takes us through books that reclaim feminism and words with negative connotations comic journalism short stories and more Once upon a time a snake fell in love with a pretty mongoose her little pink face the way she turned her head and looked backwards all this enchanted him and on a brilliant afternoon under the shade of a gigantic banyan he declared his love i am a prince he began ruler of the snake world and on occasion a god but nonetheless little mongoose i am in love with you he reared himself up and spared his hood and looked tremendous the sky was dusty and white at the edges the grass was scorched the rivers were dry and the sun blazed down the mongoose just looked at him but she didn't kill him she let him go now this was in april at the height of summer but in early june when the rains first hit the west coast of india the simple minded cobra was still in love she is probably shy and much overawed i'll approach her again and force my attentions this time they met in a small clearing close to a village and they had an audience of village people but the cobra didn't care he called out to the mongoose watch out little mongoose i have come to get you then he lunged she struck back it was a magnificent fight the cobra was fierce but the mongoose was quicker It took half an hour. The cobra was killed. The mongoose was tired, but she cleaned herself and licked off the blood. The watching villagers buried the snake. They mourned their god, but they fed the mongoose. This tale has no moral, but I might point out that not all simple-minded cobras finish as victims. Thank you, Madhuri Advani. That was an excerpt from the book Feminist Fables by Suniti Namjoshi. We'll be right back after this to discuss the book in further detail. Did you know that Parsis in Mumbai instead of being left at the tower of silence after they die are now cremated and why because a cow fell sick in the early 1990s Did you know that the smog in Delhi is caused by something that farmers in Punjab do and that there's no way to stop them Did you know that there wasn't one gas tragedy in Bhopal but three one of them was seen but two were unseen Did you know that many well-intentioned government policies hurt the people they're supposed to help Why was demonetization a bad idea? How should GST have been implemented? Why are all our politicians so corrupt when not all of them are bad people? I'm Amit Verma and in my weekly podcast The Seen and the Unseen, I take a shot at answering all these questions and many more. I aim to go beyond the scene and show you the unseen effects of public policy and private action. I speak to experts on economics, political philosophy, cognitive neuroscience and constitutional law so that the insights can blow not only my mind but also yours. The Seen and the Unseen releases every Monday. So do check out the archives and follow the show at seenunseen.in. You can also subscribe to The Seen and the Unseen on whatever podcast app you happen to prefer. Welcome to Paperback by the Open Library Project. I am your co-host Satyajit otherwise known as Onion Knight in most food circles. I am hosting this podcast with my co-founder at the Open Library Project Racheta Sharma. Hi guys, my name is Racheta and I'm an ex-banker who gave up my banking profession to follow my passion and run libraries across the world. The Open Library Project is a non-fiction book library service offered to businesses on a subscription basis. We're trying to move away from the run-of-the-mill library concept by setting up rotational and locational curated libraries at co-working spaces, corporates and business incubators. The idea here is is to create value build a knowledge community and encourage a growth mindset amongst our members today we have with us on the show madhuri advani she is a storyteller she does storytelling for children and adults and has an active youtube channel called kahaniyon ka adda 
Madhuri is also our producer at Paperback and we are very excited to have her on the show today. Welcome to the show Madhuri. Thank you. It feels great to be on this side of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. This is our producer special. A so. producer special yeah. show. Great, yeah. great. We're very excited. <laughs> so the first book that you're speaking about Madhuri is uh, The Feminist, Feminist Fables, Fables by Suniti Nam Joshi, right? Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this uh, tell us a little bit about this book. Okay, let me ask you first. When yeah. you hear the word fables, what comes to your mind? So, Prachita, go ahead. So, fables to me would be uh, stories with, uh, you know, a message or... So, basically, uh, a collection of stories hmm. uh, with or without a message. I'm not sure about that, yeah, but yeah. 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 But and when I think about fables, like, just like you read in the uh, excerpt when we started hmm. the show, it's uh, what comes to mind is a lot of talking animals and, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, stuff like that, yeah. which yeah. is sort of uh, outside the realm of reality. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, the st- fables that we grew up uh, hearing always had a moral. I yeah. don't uh, yeah, I've not come what... across many, many that haven't had any morals. Yeah. I mean, there's always like a subtle message. A subtle message yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what so I think of. Yeah. Fables come from this tradition of oral storytelling. So okay. when people would sit in a circle and tell each other stories, they come. Right. They would come up with these fictional characters. Okay. Now maybe at that time they did not always have a moral, hmm. right. but now these fables they enter our school syllabus. Like right. this is right, how we introduce right. kids to reading and writing, uh-huh. and we need to tell them that all this killing and animals pouncing on each other needs to have a moral you need to learn something so okay. it becomes the education model okay. where you need to teach them something okay. and that okay. is why there are so many writers who are doing away with this whole idea of having a moral with a story okay. because what does a story do it expands your imagination and yeah. that is what we are focusing on right. let yeah. kids take whatever they want to take yeah. absolutely now yeah. Suniti Namjoshi takes it a step ahead she's calling it feminist fables okay. now she's reclaiming two words here one mm-hmm. is feminist another mm-hmm. is fable Mm-hmm. Right. So the way feminism is used today with a lot of negative connotation, mm-hmm. she tries to reappropriate it and mm-hmm. tell you that feminism is nothing but talking about imbalance of power. Yes. Right. And that can be anywhere. Yes. It doesn't exactly. there's nothing manly or womanly about it. It includes caste, class, everything. Correct. Yeah. But right. she's doing it very subtly by using fables. Mm-hmm. So okay. she's retelling them where mm-hmm. talking animals mm-hmm. take on some characters. Okay. So the story that I spoke about was snake mm-hmm. and mongoose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Snake becomes a he. Mm-hmm. He wants to charm the mongoose. Right. He's looked at this mongoose and immediately falls in love. Right. right. But the mongoose doesn't fall back in love. Yeah. yeah. So He's this like is chill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not interested. yeah. And the mongoose doesn't attack. Right. The mongoose is like, okay, I just don't want to pay attention. Yeah. 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 This is like any other story where a, a man or a boy is trying to woo a girl and she doesn't pay attention yeah. but he ca- keeps on continuing now in this story yes <laughs> could be yeah but in this story hmm. the mongoose has the power to attack mm-hmm. so the mongoose attacks and kills the snake right. for the villagers they feel pity for the snake because they don't know this kind of power yeah. play which has been going on right. exactly right. and yeah. the story ends with that there is no moral to this tale but not all cobras would end up as victims right. yeah. not all right. cobras would be dead That's oh yeah, that's beautiful. Only actually. the foolish ones who chase unrequited love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, this this isn't for children. Like I right. wouldn't if I read it to children. I don't think they'll get this layers of meaning. Absolutely. But yeah. there are ways of telling it to them. Hmm. Like there's this one tale uh, that I start with whenever I go to my storytelling sessions. Mm-hmm. It's on monkey and crocodiles. Have you heard that tale? Uh, monkey and crocodiles. I think I yeah. remember something, but vaguely. Not, yeah, not, uh, maybe the image. If you look at this image, there's this monkey on the on the tree. tree I remember the monkeys on the tree and the crocodiles in the water. In the, uh, yeah, water. yeah. They eventually become friends. They become friends eventually. Right? And uh, crocodile's wife tells mm-hmm. him to get monkey's heart. She wants to ah, eat. Ah, she wants to eat the monkey's heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So now she's picking up from this tale, but okay. in this tale, monkey and crocodiles are friends. Okay. Now okay. the monkey wants to travel, so this hmm. is an adventurous monkey. Okay. This monkey is she, hmm. and crocodile is he. Okay. So she tells the crocodile. you know i really want to go to the end of this river and see what's the source right so the crocodile tells the monkey no you shouldn't go out alone there are yeah. beast out there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the monkey is like so what you are also a beast and <laughs> i befriended right. you so i'll be befriend, befriend any other beast mm-hmm. i see on the way mm-hmm. so they say no you don't understand they have scaly hides they mm-hmm. have big jaws they have big eyes and they can hurt you mm-hmm. so monkey is like no nothing will happen i'll take care of myself the mm-hmm. monkey goes off 7 years later the monkey has come back okay. now this is one eyed monkey it oh. has lost one tail it oh. has lost six teeth so the crocodile uh, feels sorry for yeah. uh, his friend and then the monkey tells him that you know you told me there'll be beast out there why didn't you tell me they'll look exactly like you 
Oh, oh. <laughs> that's that's a deep quite mess. The, yeah, yeah, quite the twist in the yeah, end. Yeah. So, uh, would it be accurate to say that all the fables in this book have a feminist connotation in terms of mm. uh, sort of showing what gender parity needs to be like? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of gender parity, but other than that, also she talks about uh, the death of a father. So, how okay. do you convey that with a story? So, okay. in some animals group, if someone mm. has died, mm. so again, death also leads to a lot of power play. Who will run the family now? Yeah. Right. So, as I said, she's playing. She is toying with the idea of power and okay. that is the most amazing way all of her stories she has written extensively for children okay they are talking a lot about environment so when mm. i say power play it mm-hmm. it's also our power men playing on environment so how right. do you make children conscious about it uh, in the sense that how children can do something about it and not just listen it in terms of stories yeah. so her characters the adventures are to save the forest to do something about the forest okay. Okay. little things you can take up and do in your own life so that's so beautiful really, like really it's amazing. basically uh it uh makes you introspect and think about mm-hmm. the various layers that are actually attached to the story yeah so that's really beautiful mm-hmm. but uh do tell us about kahaniyo mm-hmm. ka adda and um, mm-hmm. How did how you get into storytelling, uh, you? storytelling yeah. and how did you get into a YouTube channel? Yeah. Okay, so uh, my love for stories began when I was in school. Okay. I would listen to this radio storyteller Neelesh Mishra, okay. and I would retell his stories. So I was a storyteller in my school. We would all sit in a circle oh, wow. and tell stories to each other. Okay. Back then, I had no nothing in my mind that this can be a profession or right. I can really take this ahead. Right. Now the love of stories grew to such an extent that I took arts and humanities. Right. Okay. So when our professor asked us why are you here why do you want to do literature the only answer I had was I want to read stories. I want okay. to know more stories. So it all began like that and then my stories started getting perspective like am I this is this a first person narrative am mm-hmm. I speaking for someone else right. who are yeah. the people I can address right. am I privileged can mm-hmm. I address mm-hmm. that through my stories. Right. Yeah. So through that I started writing stories. Okay. Now a lot of th- that writing was in English and I realized that English is a problem because it reaches few sections of, of society. In right. India. Yeah. Yeah. It so, did not reach my folks. Okay. My parents did not understand what do I say and okay. why do I say it. Right. Yeah. And so came the next part that is Kahaniyo Ka Adda. Okay. I wanted to tell tales hmm. but also it should reach my folks. Right. So I started right. with Kahaniyo Ka Adda. I narrated uh, stories in Hindi there. Okay. Okay. They're from day to day life, ordinary life, people around me. Hmm. And uh, one thread which connects my stories on Kahaniyo Ka Adda is witches. Is witches. witches. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, How interesting. interesting. <laughs> so, okay. Again, I'll throw this question at you. Yeah. What comes to your mind when you listen the word witches? Harry Potter. <laughs> so, uh, two, three things actually. Two things actually. Yeah. One is obviously Harry Potter, and <laughs> then uh, there's a Wiccan religion, you know, uh, in uh, America. Which, ah yes, uh, mm-hmm. incorporates a lot, lot of witchcraft and all. Yeah, so these yeah. two things do come to mind. And Sabrina, probably. Sabrina, <laughs> yeah, Sabrina, the, the teenage recent, witch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But how is witch as a character to you? Evil. So that's Always the beautiful evil. bit about <laughs> Harry Potter to yeah. me because uh, you know, up until I read Harry Potter, it was all about you know it's the evil connotation mm-hmm. to black magic and voodoo and all of that, but. Yeah. Um, after reading that book it was a totally different perspective on you know what it means to yeah, be a witch or, yeah, a, or wizard. a wizard yeah it yeah. can be fun to like and use that, magic you know ev- everybody it's not a general um, you know sort of statement that you can make about anybody like, right mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah also and hooked nose comes when i think of witches huh. yeah. like a hooked nose okay yeah <laughs> the, 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 those broom, kind of structures there's yeah, broom there's the cap yeah. broom and the hat yeah yeah, yeah. So again, as I said, we believe in re uh, reappropriating words, reclaiming them. Like right. feminist yeah. is reclaimed here, right. fables is reclaimed. So I reclaim witches in the sense that witches are actually very learned women. Okay. Yeah. So if you see, they have a lot of knowledge even Absolutely. in Harry Potter. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So uh, witch hunt was actually it happened in reality that women were burnt as witches oh, yeah. because they raised their voice against established institutions. It could be church. You see women around pots and doing something. Mm-hmm. Actually, women were making herbs and medicines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. medicine as a field has not been established. Eventually, right. when it's established, it's men who are dominating it. Yeah. yeah. So they do not want women to. have this sort of knowledge so right. they start burning them as witches so it's horrible this is, it's yeah. something that happened uh, i think in the 17 late 16 17th century 16 17 sh- and, century and yeah. uh, a lot of uh, lot of women who were, were probably healers yeah yeah were convicted as witches and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. very sad part of human history yeah. and yeah. it it just goes to show the dominative nature of how ma- 
the man has Mankind. been dominating <laughs> the woman yeah. for centuries now yeah, yeah. and, and uh, whatever excuses they used whatever excuses it. they yeah. could have used have mm-hmm. been used over the past yeah. centuries yeah. but what's amazing about this time the times that mm-hmm. we are living through is for the first time in our history yeah. we are connected to the rest of the world so mm-hmm. today if i'm doing something in india yeah. i can like you have a youtube channel i can probably <laughs> make a youtube channel put up whatever i'm doing yeah. and any some some person maybe in brazil somewhere in puerto rico they anywhere can in the world read it, they can it. see it hmm. they can uh, then they can see how my life is compare their life to my life and then mm-hmm. understand that their life is not normal so yeah. that's the great uh, advantage of our times that mm-hmm. we are living through mm-hmm. that yeah. we can see this uh, mm-hmm. we can see it completely for the first time mm-hmm. yeah. i don't know if normal or not but mm-hmm. another thing is when you see certain things you start thinking and that is yeah. what we need thinking minds you right. yeah. start asking questions yeah. right. so yeah. which is in my stories are women who ask questions okay we don't know if they have achieved something that mm-hmm. whole uh, idea of only if you have achieved something only if you are successful mm-hmm. only if you have those accolades on you that we'll talk about you it's right. not like that right. yeah. the first step if you have taken the first step you're raising a voice you are a witch right. so i have some okay. of my friends like my dark skinned friend mm-hmm. who raises a vo- voice and tells them that i really don't care i'll wear dark clothes with my dark skin because that's my identity yeah. right. so she's yeah. a witch in my story then mm-hmm. i have a professor okay. who actually made us sit and think so she walked into our uh, class one day and she said just look around look at the way guys sit in the class and look at the way girls sit in the class mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we were shocked because all the guys were actually sitting like this mm-hmm. we cannot sh- and girls were like this mm-hmm. so where did you learn to contain yourself in little space and why is it that public space is occupied by men yeah. so yeah. that woman becomes mm-hmm. a witch for me because she made me think right and my mm-hmm. tale is on that woman who okay. made all of us think okay so a lot of that's my tales amazing. that's a great uh, reclaiming <laughs> of that word yeah, yeah. i think Uh, everyone should reclaim it like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you've you've given it a very uh, positive connotation, positive and beautiful perspectives. So. Yeah, <laughs> great. And on that note, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back to discuss a few more books. Hello and welcome to a brand new and exciting week on IVM. We'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors, Storytel and Paytm Money. On the scene and the unseen, Amit Verma's guest is quizmaster and sports expert Joy Bhattacharya. Joy talks about his journey as a team director for the Kolkata Knight Riders, his role in the under-17 FIFA World Cup, and the evolution of televised sports in India. On advertising is dead. Varun talks to founder and editor of Dead Ant, Ravina Raval. They talk about Dead Ant as a platform to discuss news and events around comedy. On Ganatantra, Alok and Sarayu are joined by Dr. Carol Sperry to talk about the role of women in electoral politics. On Simplified Chuck and Nareen are joined by Director Insights of Brandscape Worldwide Utsav Memoria for part 2 of How to Travel on a Desi Budget. On Geek Fruit Dinkar and Jishnu talk about the highly distinctive director screenwriter and producer Edgar Wright. On IVM Likes IVM staffers Abbas that's me Darius and Madhuri are discussing the highest IMDb rated series Chernobyl and also delve into the phenomena of grief watching. On the Habit Coach podcast, Ashton talks about the beliefs of bad and good habits and how a habit that is bad for someone can be good for someone else. On our Kannada podcast Thale Harate, Sri Ranjini speaks to Ganesh Chakravarti and Takshashila Institutions Soumya Nandan and her endeavor to revive the interest of ancient board games in India. On Equity Sahi Hai, Srinath Mithanthaya, Senior VP at Motilal Oswal AMC talks to Anupam about value migration and how it's different from value creation. And with that let's continue on with your show. Welcome back guys. We still have with us Madhuri Advani, a producer for this very special episode of Paperback. Hi. Uh, hi Madhuri. Hi. And uh, the next book that we're going on to discuss is The Delightful by AG Gardner. Yeah. Or Did I get that right? Yes, yes, okay. you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. So this is the collection of essays. Again, okay. we read this as part of my literary course. Hmm. What was interesting was the genre of writing that I was being exposed to. For okay. me, whenever I thought about writing, I would write some poems or okay. I would write stories. Right. But yeah. I never knew that how could you write an essay on a. Po- we did that in school, but that right. was way different. Yeah. We right. would just copy paste paragraph and say it in a different way. <laughs> right. Paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, that's what we did. But with this kind of writing, I realized how uh, in 18th, 19th century hmm. the style of writing changes and this is a new kind of writing because there are magazines which are coming and your paper yeah. okay. is being invented okay so uh, little anecdotes because people don't have time to sit and read the whole novels so mm-hmm. this genre comes in okay where you want to make a specific point but it's through essays if you look at the titles that this book has yeah 
it is on writing an article okay so this particular article he begins by thinking what should i write about okay mm-hmm. and he keeps on thinking he's going here and there he sees this that and again he's still thinking what should i write about right and comes towards the end and starts mm-hmm. talking about oh i've got something to write about i'll go to this place sit and write but mm-hmm. let me wear my coat mm-hmm. so he puts one hand in the coat now i want you to imagine if you're wearing your clothes which yeah. is the first hand you put right on right yeah right like why is it always right why not left maybe i'm a right hand like i am a righty so i don't know why so he realized that i always do this hmm. why do i always do that hmm. why can i not this so hmm. he got another topic that is on habits okay. so the yeah. next essay is on habits and it is little habits like this which we don't even pay attention to okay. but with practice it becomes habits okay yeah so there are re- really little observations hmm. and what is uh, great about these observations are it's written in 20th century hmm. so it's also talking about war Okay there okay. are two essays on courage and hmm. another one on fear okay. so he brings in the perspective of war hmm. uh, there's this one ship which is a fighter ship it's sinking and there are, there's only one person who can be saved there are two of them on that ship hmm. all right so this person hmm. both of them they have a conversation so person a asks person b like do you have parents hmm. the p- person b says yes i do have parents at home so this one doesn't say anything and just jumps because this person needs to be saved knowing that yeah. because their parents were looking for yeah. so ag gardener tells you that until and unless you are in that situation you mm. would never know what you are going to do absolutely yeah. that's yeah. actually yeah. really true yeah so yeah. we are as mystery to ourselves as yeah. we are to others yeah. definitely that's you... quite a profound thought actually yeah. <laughs> yeah. we think we know ourselves me. but how much do we actually know right yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, going from that to the next book that we're going to talk about yes. is what i know for sure by, by oprah, oprah winfrey, winfrey right and yeah. uh, the reason that this book is titled such is i believe uh mm. someone asked her uh, yeah. during her interviewing uh, during her vast career on tv yeah. well, i don't remember who it was yeah. but someone asked her that what do you actually know for sure opra yeah. and that really spurred her to you know put her thoughts down into this book yeah. so tell us a little bit about this book madam yeah. because she is such a celebrity figure we always think that she knows everything she has reached everywhere she has yeah. this wealth she has met so many people she did what she wanted to do she, so she is th- leading this ideal life so when right. somebody asked her this she sits back and thinks that no every day it changes right. whatever i have thought that this is for sure this is my career path this is where i'm going right. the next day it changes right. yeah. so let me put my thoughts down mm. and in all the articles again this is like a blog writing okay. yeah. so i really like this style of writing where there are short art- articles mm. and i do that on my instagram handle where there is certain topic and i'll write an article it's very short form of article but mm. again today the generation has changed it's on a click now right. our concentration right. span is even less than what it is it used to be it absolutely is. so but it's it's surprising that the last book you spoke about spoke about how essays became the norm as compared yeah. to novels right yeah. so we are in a way just repeating history again and again, again in different yeah. ways right yeah, so that's, that's amazing yeah. yeah so in this uh she says that what i know in every article she'll talk about what i know for sure is mm. this what i know mm. for sure and one thing that i picked up from here was she's very she's a person who shows her gratitude she's really grateful so right. she keeps a diary and she'll jot down five things she's grateful for for mm. that particular day yeah. she reads a diary and the first point is for the cool breeze that blowed today mm. for this friend who called me i'm like wow such little things to be grateful about wow. so when i'm really down and low this mm. is what i do mm. like, okay i really want to sit down and it just draws my attention to things i should be grateful for oh, yeah. instead of cribbing about everything in life yeah i think she's covered uh, eight themes in this book which yeah. are joy resilience connection gratitude hmm. Hmm. possibility or clarity and power yeah and uh, yeah like you mentioned gratitude and hmm. i think awareness is another thing that she's really uh, you know promoted yeah. that in terms of being aware of who you are yeah. and uh, it's okay hmm. like you know accept yourself as how hmm. you are and you will reach your self actualization she's yeah. always talking about uh, you know being grateful or being aware of your su- surroundings but yeah. uh, i think she's dealt with a very difficult life and to mm-hmm. have that kind of peace mm-hmm. uh, you know with everything that you've been with uh, been through is yeah. amazing yeah true and yeah. as you said that self love self care but something that comes with your surrounding yeah. so when i say self it doesn't only mean the self yeah it's not it's being selfish yeah. but it's just you know respecting yourself and your surrounding yeah so it's like is, you and the other because that other is always already the part of yourself yes, absolutely so absolutely. there's this one incident so what i like about these uh, kind of books is they have stories in them so yeah. every time i'm rooting for mm. stories be it fiction non fiction yeah, yeah. all your fiction also has a yeah. lot of uh, reality in it it's not fiction per se 
फिक्शन इज क्वाइट इंस्पायर्ड फ्रॉम फैक्ट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम राइट या और जस्ट अ परस्पेक्टिव यू कैन से सो इन द ड्रामेटाइज्ड परस्पेक्टिव ड्रामेटाइज्ड परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ रियल थिंग्स मोस्टली या सो इन दिस वन देयर इज वन इंसिडेंट वेयर शी टॉक्स अबाउट गोइंग ऑन अ ट्रिप विद अ फ्रेंड ऑल ऑफ अस हैव रियली रोमांटिसाइज्ड दिस आईडिया एंड अ लॉट ऑफ फिल्म्स इन बॉलीवुड हॉलीवुड यू गो ऑन ट्रिप्स विद योर फ्रेंड्स सो शी रियलाइजेस हाउ 10 आवर्स इन द सेम कार इट वाज फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग व्हेन दे गॉट आउट दे रियली वांटेड टू किल ईच अदर दे वेंट टू बिकॉज़ समवन वांटेड टू लिसन टू द म्यूजिक समवन डिड नॉट वांट टू एंड दे वर टायर्ड दे वर ओनली लूज वेयर डू यू गो वेयर डू यू सिट वेयर डू यू ईट सो इट वाज एक्चुअली वेरी फ्रस्ट्रेटिंग but when they returned after hmm. that long trip hmm. she still had the same love for that friend and she called that friend up and she was like when when are we meeting next for a cup of coffee or whatever yeah. so then she ends it with the note that it's not always going to be exciting and fun with your friends not all time is that right. you'll be frustrated a lot of times yeah. but even after that span of time you want to go back to them and have a fun conversation that's your real friend right right mm-hmm. yeah. that's even like in terms of her marriage you know it's beautiful that she's had the longest relationship with her partner yeah. and they live together but you know so they recently did decide to get married and then did not yeah and she said that you know what it's beautiful how it is so why should we have mm. to give it this tag or you know this certificate because whatever we would do for each other we already do it and yeah. Once you get married, that flips. So she was. She's. <laughs> she's so been cool. very like you know with that person for about over thirty years, yeah. I think now. Yeah. But even her best friend Gail, I think. Gail that's, the best friend, uh, that's the best friend. That's the guest best friend. About, because she's yeah. so famous as being a Oprah's best friend over the world. Yeah, world. yeah. We've seen her so many times on the Oprah show. Yeah. yeah. So there are very few people who are so genuine and open, and they're not pretending. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. a lot of celebrity stuff, stuff that I see today. Uh, it makes you compare yourself to a lot of other things mm. right. and it doesn't give you that peace wala feeling but mm. when i read oprah i really get that also because she's coming from a different generation yeah. i get that and if she was today with the kind of social media we have it would have been different but that's exactly what she does right she mm. uses stories like yeah. real time stories yes. to bring out important messages it could yeah. be feminism or it could be you know mm-hmm. equality mm-hmm. in yes. terms of um you know race or it could yeah, be yeah she talks about money in lot of like how she had to tell them that this is how much i need this is what i charge for my particular thing eventually yeah. she doesn't have to think about it but when she started her career oh, yeah. she started by babysitting that okay. is what she says okay. so this particular lady was paying her some certain money and she did more than she was asked for okay. and it was then that she realized why am i doing that that means right. i myself don't value my labor right. exactly and then right. she goes to the next person who's paying her more and she's like on that day i decided i'm going to value my labor mm-hmm. and that is valuing myself yeah yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a great thought yeah i think everyone at some point in their career needs to decide that yeah you know this is what i am worth and i'm not going to compromise on that yeah right and she's right. a wonderful woman a role leader. model for yeah. people across the yeah. world and uh, so moving on to the next book yeah. is uh, palestine by joe sacco palestine by joe sacco so this is a comic book right it's a yeah, non fiction comic book it's a non fiction comic book and that's i the think uh, sacco is known as a comic journalist yes, now yes. so yes yeah. okay so he is the one who's pioneering this whole idea of comic journalism mm-hmm. so usually mm-hmm. when you read comics mm-hmm. what books come to your mind superman batman archies like, yeah archies yeah. avengers yeah mm-hmm. so again that is located in a certain kind of its uh, genre, historicity yeah. and also okay. why was it necessary why were schools not allowing people to read this comics what right. is it that comes out when you read it right. is there aggression is there sexuality what yeah. gets addressed yeah. Yeah. so he's using that same format that same mm-hmm. kind of storytelling and drawing the way mm-hmm. illustrated they are very it's like jumping out okay. there is a certain style to it there are certain blocks the narrative mm-hmm. but he puts uh, it's like reporting what mm-hmm. i have seen in palestine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and also at that time he uh, visits palestine in 1991 and okay. it is the reports these mm-hmm. are all the reports of that particular period there are many journalists who were going there but they weren't allowed to click pictures okay. mm-hmm. and i don't know how much of your media or mobile has still taken over yeah. so how do you report it how do you talk about it because right. your government is controlling everything people yeah. are being killed mm-hmm. how do you bring justice yeah. not to say that the task is done just because you talk about it the justice will be served so he shows that kind of stuff also in his book that i'm mm. exasperated because this does not happen okay. when you start as a journalist you feel oh i'll get accolades i'll get awards because i've brought justice to the people mm. but only talking about them is just a small step towards right. hel- helping them towards helping them yeah. so just creating the awareness and yeah. hoping that it will lead to change yes yeah. like yes. it uh, doesn't always lead to change i guess that's something mm. that journalists that work in crime scene uh, that work in war torn scenarios or yeah. you know crime ridden uh, cities 
have to make their peace with yeah. yeah so one could also argue that he could have written this in the form of columns or some right. books that this is what happened yeah. but he's using comic storytelling so he's giving different again he's reclaiming the whole right. idea of comic books yeah. Yeah. yeah and he's giving you a different meaning that comics can also be about serious stuff but yeah. this is amazing right because he's yeah. literally pioneering a new category of books yes yes where uh, I mean, why not? Why can't we use comic books to talk about uh, mm-hmm. things that happen in real life? Yes, I think, uh, exactly. And in fact, there are so many columns in the newspaper, mm-hmm. also which you know address political issues in a comic fashion. So, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Why all, not in a book form? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And also, uh, in comics, you have superheroes, you have villains, yeah. and you always think that good prevails. Mm-hmm. There'll be justice at the end. Yeah. Here, when you see him, he himself is drawn in this. Like you see, okay. th- this is a person, and throughout the book, you understand that where is this person featuring, and it is his interactions with other people. Okay. okay. So in all the frames, you see him, which also tells you this is again his perspective, right. not necessarily that this is how people would have looked at him. Right. Yeah. He's still an outsider. It's his, his perspective of yeah. the truth. Like this yeah. is how I see things yeah. uh, from my point of view. So right. because he occupies most of the frames, we think okay, this is the hero of the story, right. and then you realize right. that he isn't. He's as vulnerable as anyone who's reading this book, right. or who's going through. through that stuff and there are ordinary characters which occupy the spaces okay. and i think whenever i'm looking for narratives i'm always looking for this day to day life this ordinary lives now mm. i cannot call this ordinary because right. there's so much violence yeah. which is yeah. happening yeah. but uh, you look at these features they have these yeah. characters yeah. so also uh, palestinians like arabs they have this long nose mm-hmm. they have gaps between their teeth mm-hmm. so the these cultural elements come out because you don't see them on media you so don't see them on television right. yeah. so in my right. graphic storytelling i actually see how they look right. okay there's a lot of way they have pita bread mm-hmm. i never knew what it is but it's drawn here and you know how pita bread looks right. they mm-hmm. have the culture of black coffee mm-hmm. they'll sit around and rounds and rounds of tea and black coffee would go around yeah. and they'll tell you this is what happened to me when i was in jail this is what happened to me yeah. when i was beaten like it was common out of 10 people sitting on the people nine of them have gone to jail Okay. And the one person who hasn't, you're wondering, why haven't you been to jail? What did you do to escape yeah. this uh, trauma? Yeah, and yeah. when you're reading yeah. it, but I feel like un- tragedy always has a comic streak to it. So, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, they, it, it does. That, what is that yeah. saying? Oh, tragedy is just com. Comedy timed right or something. I don't know. <laughs> comedy timed right. <laughs> something yeah. like that. Maybe. Yeah, but it, it's really hard to read this book. Like I've always been able to read two chapters, but even when you see. It's, You feel it's easy to read because there's so many pictures and less yeah. text, mm-hmm. but after two chapters, you really want to sit back because you live in a really privileged space. Oh, there's yeah. no yeah. violence. There is violence happening today in our country, but yeah. not, but not to this extent. Not like this. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not living in constant fear and constant. Yeah, I mean, we'll be shot at, and that's. Yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine living in a place like that. Yeah. Right? So there's this old man in uh, in this particular story, and he's wearing that uh, whole. the patta the way they wear it i mm-hmm. don't know what's that veil called okay and he said that i came back with my family we all escaped when uh, this attack happened in mm-hmm. tifada that okay. is what it's called okay so they said you have to evacuate because this is our promised land and we'll come and occupy this land jews said this and so mm-hmm. all the arabs escaped now after some time they come back because they want to show their children their families where we lived what was our right. generation what was our ancestry So they come back and there's nothing there. Oh Everything has been destroyed. They pull down all their houses hmm. to an extent that their economy depended on olive trees. So oh. all the olive trees were cut and removed. So brutality, not to the extent of yeah. killing lives, but killing their memories. Yeah, my God. that's sad. My God. Yeah. So sounds very heavy this book. Yeah. And a real but twist on uh, comic books, right? Yeah, yeah. All your books have this. Uh, you know read between the lines yeah, sort of yeah. theme going so that's great. it's layered right like yeah. once you really get into amassing information in any form mm-hmm, like through mm-hmm. books through through videos through any sort of media yeah. you sort of realize that uh, the best writers mm-hmm. or the best stories have multiple layers to them yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not about it's never about just that one thing it's about how that one thing in the context of yeah. 100 other things and how mm-hmm. that plays out right so, yeah. so, so you know when you which have read life. all f- <laughs> which is life exactly. yeah exactly and when you have read all this and you can read in between the lines it informs your writing style also writing yeah. skill yeah. Yeah. and when i write certain things there are certain in between things that 
I would expect the audience to read. If not, yeah. expect the audience. This is what is there in my mind. Right. right. And right. also the multiplicity of text. This mm-hmm. is how I sitting in India I read it in 2019. Maybe right. the person who's written it in 1991 or been through all that doesn't necessarily uh, mean uh, read that. it like that, right? Yeah. Or they yeah. take different meanings out of it hmm. just because of the times they're living in. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So our, our teacher would always tell us death of the author. Like, why do you claim what you have written? Because it is interpreted and it becomes something else. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that is how we started with fables. I think we have come a full circle. Like right. fables, they never had any authors. Yeah. It was oral storytelling oral story. in groups. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think stories are supposed to live like that. Yeah. 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 And the greatest stories live beyond the authors, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they yeah. live on forever. Yeah. Great. Great. This has been an amazing episode, Mathuri. It yeah. was. For me too. Uh, it yeah. was great to have you on this side of the mic. <laughs> we were looking and forward. We were really to looking this forward song. to it. <laughs> Thank and, you so uh, much. So, what is your Instagram or YouTube uh, handle? Okay, on, uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just write Madhuri Advani, Kahaniyo Ka Adda. Okay. And I post one story every month. At okay. least that's what I try. Okay. And you can find me on my Instagram handle at mad underscore ad mad ad. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And a big thank you to all our listeners. You can follow the Open Library Project on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook for latest updates on our events. And stay tuned for the next paperback podcast on IVM Podcasts. Happy reading! You can follow IVM Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at IVM Podcasts. Listen to paperback on the IVM Podcast app, website, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi. I'm Vishal Gondal, an entrepreneur. I've had the chance to meet and understand how some of the super achievers have hacked their way to success and they have done spectacular innovations. Now I take a closer look at these people's lives to find out what lies beneath the force. Only on the Vishal Gondal show. Episodes out fortnightly on Wednesdays on the IVM website, app or your favorite podcasting platform. Shunya wan shunya wan shunya wan shunya wan a billion dollar acquisition another copycat startup got formed no the tech world in india is surely moving double the speed of this voiceover Tune in to Shunya One every Tuesday to catch us talking to the smartest people we know on the IBM Podcast website app or wherever you get your podcasts from.